Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Bloodborne the board game. We're going to be moving into Chapter 2. Colin and I together were able to take down Chapter 1. It was an absolute blast. I had so much fun being able to do that game with him. And we're going to, of course, be doing more games together in the future. But sadly, playing Bloodborne together has come to an end. He's and I are going to be doing a lot of other games coming up. But this one I'm going to be continuing on my own. So I hope you guys are going to have an equally fun experience being able to play along with me in Bloodborne the board game for chapter two and three. Sadly, in the way things go, there isn't always a lot of time to be able to get together and sometimes other things get in the way. But I want to keep on playing Bloodborne and of course we want to conclude the missions to see if we can make it all the way through this entire campaign. So we're going to be moving into mission two and then we're going to be moving into chapter three after, of course, if we survive chapter two, we got to do that first. We're going to be continuing on with, of course, the wheel. He is going to be continuing on in his campaign with us and I'm also going to be playing Colin's character, the Threaded Cane. She's also going to be continuing on. Hopefully I can play her as well as he did because he definitely was the MVP of the first campaign, or sorry, the first chapter. But we're going to be moving in the second chapter. We're going to do the setup first and then we're going to start playing. The setup isn't going to be as long as it was for the first video because there's not a lot of it to explain. We're just going to see the monsters we're fighting. We're going to read through the actual chapter card and I'm going to go ahead and show you the cards we get and of course the upgrade deck. So let's get to it. If you think the wheel and the threaded cane can make it through chapter two, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. First thing we're going to do to get the setup ready is just to go ahead and get our upgrade deck ready. So I'm going to take the top four cards off of our deck and see what they are. The first one is Second Wind. When used for non-attack action, heal two. Oh, that's really awesome. All right, the next one is Tireless. Draw two, then discard one card. And I can remove either of those statuses. The next one is Defensive. Block two, which is pretty good. We got three of these kind of cards. And we have one of these agile. It's going to be stagger and it's going to be at plus one speed. Oh, the wheel loves to get things that have plus one speed to them. So those are the possible cards that we could buy moving into the hunter's dream. Now we're going to go ahead and set up the chapter two. So we are going to be fighting the same type of enemies we had in the first one. And I've just gone ahead and randomly put them out. Some of them might be the same, some might not. I'll show you them shortly. We've gone ahead and taken these tiles and also mixed in four random tiles. Now we're going to be playing with the Fall of Yarn and the card one. That was the one we had last time where we could go ahead and trade in some of our consumables. It says here, while the hunter at the hunter's dream, hunters may discard one consumable and replace it with one antidote card from the consumable deck. Or discard pile and then we shuffle the deck afterwards so that is still in play other than that we're just gonna go ahead flip this card over and begin chapter 2 it's gonna start with our mission to hunt which is gonna be card 18 we're also gonna start with hunt card 26 revealed as well and then end a move in the alleyway tile we're gonna reveal card 28 and if we end a move in the barred window we're gonna reveal card 34 so the first card we're going to get is card 18, which is right here. This is the hunt mission. It says the spreading plague. The extent of this outbreak is concerning. These are not the typical signs of the beast plague, but something new altogether. Finding the remaining powder keg has diminished in priority compared to discovering whatever we can about this new threat. If this is truly some new sickness, then all of Yarnum is potentially at risk. If we end a move on the occupied house tile, we're going to reveal card number 19. Now, of course, there is one more thing we have to do, and that is we have to reveal card 26. So let's go ahead and take a look at card number 26. It is an insight mission. It says burnt reminders. The purity of flame has long been one of our strongest tools against the infected, both physically and as a display to the common folk of our might. 
Sometimes they forget themselves. Let us create some reminders that even the face of a plague such as this, we dare not waver. We, can, we have to place uh, insight tokens equal to the number of hunters plus one on this card. Each time you slay an enemy while it is on the central lamp tile, I can remove a token from this card. Then complete this mission when this card has no remaining tokens. And at that point, we are going to reveal card number 27. So let's go ahead and put those tokens on it. So here are those three tokens. Now in the last video we did, I made a mistake when it came to the inside tokens when fighting that hunter's mob. I was removing them and then having to heal them and we didn't actually should have actually fought the hunter's mob one more time. I wanna thank people in the comments for telling me about that. And I hopefully was able to get that pinned to the mission so people can read that that was a mistake we made. So we have to make sure we, this time I have to actually remove all these and that will be completing this mission. I don't have to worry about doing an extra thing on top of it. We're going to go ahead and place our hunt mission right here. Now remember, when that hunt mission is complete, we have completed chapter two. I've got the rest of our cards right down here, the chapter two mission, the burnt reminders, and our antidote card. And here, of course, is the rest of our cards. Here are all the enemies we're going to be using. That's our upgrade deck. We got our action deck over here, and these are the consumable and actual item deck that we're able to find. These are some tokens down here, of course. Now the bee's patient. Again, I'm not sure if this is the one we used last time. I should just check. I can watch the video and find out, but we're just going to go ahead. It's going to be awesome. So, of course, here's a claw move she's got a he's, she's got a special ashen rage attack and she's got ashen blood the male beast patient has some moves and so of course the scourge beast and we'll look at these as we play the game and we see the enemies come on the board Moving over to our player board, of course, we've got our 12 cards. Just give them a little quick truffle shuffle here, put them down. We can choose which one of these we want. I actually want the Ludwig's rifle right now. This says, when an enemy moves into your space, deal two damage to that enemy. And then, of course, we flip it over. I have to discard two cards to refresh it. Or, of course, if I go to the Hunter's Dream, or if there's some other effect that allows me to flip it back over, we'll be able to take advantage of this yet again. So we're going to put that right there. We've got our trick weapon, and I can choose either this side that staggers and affect enemies attack of the same speed or I could put it on the other side is when you dodge deal one damage to all enemies within one space we're gonna keep it on the stagger hopefully that can happen I gave the threaded cane the move too and also I gave him this pugnant blood cocktail non boss enemies within two spaces don't activate now of course they will be able to uh, counter attack us but when they go and I have to use that on my active during my hunters phase and it will prevent things from activating but it doesn't prevent them actually attacking if I attack them I have my deck right here we're gonna draw our three cards and see which three we get we've gotten a basic dodge a basic dodge <laughs> I totally took the wrong side of the board <laughs> <laughs> so the the threaded cane will be doing a lot of dodging at the beginning here, but hopefully the wheel will be doing some fun stuff. The wheel is sitting here. I could either use the one that says I may suffer to up to two damage to deal that much in additional damage, or of course the other side is on attack heal one. Well, when I attack, it's when it's going to activate. I may have done that a little bit wrong in the last play, the last mission. So when I when on attack, it's when it's going to happen. So if I'm not taking any damage yet, I might not want to do it right away. We also can choose between the Evelyn or our Hunter's Pistol, and both of them are going to be able to do the same thing. When an enemy makes a basic attack, automatically stagger that enemy. The only difference is this one, I have to discard a card to refresh, where Evelyn, I can discard a card or a Blood Echo if I want to refresh this. So I'm going to be using the Evelyn because that's a better thing. Now, this one allows me to refresh it for free. I've got Quicksilver Bullets, and I've got a Bold hunter's mask that allows me to teleport my hunter to any lantern space I want to which would be pretty cool now I did get a rune in the last one and I kept it on him and it says on attack so again I have to choose to use this when we go ahead and make an attack before we draw any cards and it says the attack gains stagger and may stagger attacks at the same speed so we're going to have that as well now of course these are consumables once they're used they're gone this on the other hand I just flip over and I can re-energize this when I go to the hunter's dream we're going to draw three cards for him as well hopefully it's not all dodges you got a basic attack a dodge oh my gosh everybody's dodging here and what is this one this is oh this is our swift card it does an extra damage and it actually attacks at a faster speed so if I put it here I'd be doing four damage and I'd be attacking at a two speed which would really help out so those are his three cards we're going to place them right here and now we're going to go ahead and set ourselves up on the board 
Unless otherwise told by your chapter or mission of some kind, you will always be starting on the central lamp tile. And I can start anywhere on this tile. I'm going to choose to both start right here in the middle, and hopefully that'll help us out. We're going to go ahead first and start with a threaded cane. She's going to get rid of her dodge card to be able to use two movement points. And she's going to go ahead and move up one space. So we're going to go ahead and take our first tile and reveal it. We have found the graveyard. Now, I don't think the graveyard is one of the things we're looking for. For. We're looking for the alleyway, the barred window, and also an occupied house. So we don't, this is not one of the tiles we're looking for, but so I can rotate this in any direction I want to. I'm actually going to put it this way, and I automatically have to move into this space. And we have to spawn this enemy, which is going to be the one with kind of a red symbol right here. I don't know exactly what that symbol is, but it's a symbol for an enemy. <laughs> so we're going to go grab the enemy. Here's our three enemies, and it looks like it's going to be the male beast patient. So we're going to go ahead and take one of these guys and put him out on the board. We're going to place it right here next to us. Now there also is a spot for a consumable, so I'm going to go ahead and place one of the consumables right up here. And of course, I can take advantage of that if by doing an interact action. If, of course, if I do one with a monster there, he gets a free attack on me, so we don't want to do that. I do have one more movement point left. I moved up one, and I can move back as another one. And if I move out of a square with an enemy, that enemy will follow me into the next space. And when he does that, oh boy, do I got a plan for him. I've got my Ludwig's rifle. We're going to go ahead and use this. When an enemy moves into your space, deal two damage to that enemy. So we're going to go ahead and blast that enemy for two damage, bringing his health down to three. I'm going to place that right here. Our beast patient does have three health, and it looks like it's going to attack with medium attacks, which is just fine because I do have another action now. I'm going to go ahead and attack him. I'm going to use, of course, my basic action to go ahead and attack him. We're going to use it in our quick cut slot, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our Ludwig's rifle. I shouldn't get, say get rid of it. We're going to exhaust it, and I'm going to go ahead and attack him at a attack speed of three. We are then going to shuffle up our enemy action deck and see what kind of action our enemy does. Our enemy is going to perform a special. The special with our beast patient is going to be Ashen Toxin. It's a two speed attack. It's poison. If the hunter's already poisoned, they suffer stun and their attack deals negative two damage. But lucky for us, this special is moving in at a two speed and our quick cut is a three speed. So it's gonna happen before that attack happens, dealing one damage, which is enough to kill our male beast patient. We have gone ahead, destroyed the male beast patient. We are gonna remove one of our insight tokens from our insight mission where we have to kill three enemies on the central lamp tile. So, so far we've gotten one of our enemies. Also, we are going to get one of our blood echoes to place down on our board. I can only have a maximum of three, but we already have one by killing this guy. That was awesome. That's a great turn. So that's two actions. Our Threaded Cane does have one more action if I really want to do it, and I think we are. We're going to go ahead and use this to go ahead and move again. I lied. I'm actually not going to discard this card. I'm actually going to try to use that my next turn, and I need to clear this slot. Just because it's a dodge card, I still get to abide by this. So I did use it as an attack, and I clear the slot. So we're going to go ahead, clear that card, and we're going to move into the wheel's turn now. The wheel's going to go ahead and discard this card to go ahead and move two spaces. The reason I did that is I do have one in my hand that can already do that. And we're going to go ahead and draw our next map tile because I'm going to move right down this way. We're going to see what we have found. We have found we have found the alleyway. Okay, so there's only two places to go because now, you can, of course, you cannot lay it like this. You have to lay them in the direction that they're facing so that the two things connect together. So we're going to do that. I'm going to move one into here. And I don't know if we have anything. Oh, we do have one. It says end a move on alleyway tile review card 28. So I haven't ended my move yet, but we're going to go ahead and spawn this guy right here because that's the character that matches that. I'm going to move into the square with him. So that's my second move to there, which then does end my move on the alleyway tile. So I'm going to reveal card number 28, and we're going to go ahead and read that one. It is right here, and it says... Insight mission, those that remain, you come upon a small band of town folk huddled together against the creature standing before them. One moves to feebly attack it and is immediately cut down. Your attack will not be so inept. Place one survivor token on the alleyway space. 
interact with the survivor token reveal card 29. I'm actually just going to place that right here and I'm going to go ahead and put our survivor token down. I don't exactly know what these guys are thinking, but I guess, you know, fighting for your life, that's what you do. We're, that's our first move action. We're going to go ahead and take our second action. And we're actually going to try to take this dog down in one shot. I'm going to go ahead and use my swift card played right here in my empowered slam to do four damage and I'm going to be going at a quicker speed. Or if we look at this card, he does have a three speed attack that does two and then a one speed and a one speed. So unless he, if he draws the basic attack, it's the only one that's actually going to be faster than my attack here. The other option I have is using Swift here, doing three damage and then hurting myself to deal the extra damage. But I I don't know if hurting myself is going to be the best plan. So we're going to go ahead and just move this right over here. And we're going to see what our Scourge Beast draw from his enemy action. He has drawn the ability card, which is right down here. It says, as at a <laughs> one speed before the Hunter's attack spawn one Scourge Beast in this place. Well, my attack is going to be going off before it because it's not a one speed. It's plus one speed. So it's a two speed. So I'm going to be hitting this Scourge Beast for four damage, which will kill it. So I'm going to gain a Blood Echo and I'm going to go ahead and remove him from the board. And we're just going to continue on. Sadly, it would have been great to move him back up here with my dodge card and attacked him up there, but I wanted to save my last card to be able to use an interact action to be able to deal with this insight mission. I know this is also an insight mission, but this is also an insight mission. Let's go ahead and take care of this. I am going to interact with the survivor token and reveal card number 29, which is right here. Let's see what happens. It says insight mission, those that remain. The band of survivors shies away from you, cautiously watching you with their fear in their eyes. As you, as if you were another beast ready to strike, before approaching, you recall the effects of the outbreak overtaking the district. The ruthless approach would be to cut them down where they stand and not risk spreading the plague. But it is not the very reason we hunt, but to protect the common folk. I have to choose one aid the survivors or attack the survivors. Wow, what a choice right off the bat. Oh boy. Okay, so they could be, they could have the plague and at some point they may turn into one of these evil creatures or who knows, they could be totally fine. Now, of course, one got ripped down by this creature. So I'm guessing if it had the plague, it wouldn't have actually attacked its own person. So I think we are going to try to aid the survivors. We're going to reveal card number 30, which is right here. This could be terrible. It says right here, those that remain. Such a large group will undoubtedly attract attention, but we must do what we can to get them someplace safe, at least for now. Right here it says, when a hunter moves out of the space with the survivor token, it may be moved up to two spaces. After this move, all enemies within one tile and not in a space with a hunter move one space toward the token. If there are ever enemies in the space with the token, at the end of the hunter's turn, the survivors are slain. Return the token to the alleyway space. To complete the mission, when the token moves into the courtyard lamp space. Oh, wow. That's absolutely super lucky. Check that out. So we're going to be <laughs> we're one space away. We're going to be able to help these people out. That's going to be awesome. All right. We, wow. That worked out really, really good. So all we have to do is get our these people back to the courtyard lamp space. But of course, I'm out of cards for this turn. We're going to be moving into the end phase here, and then we're going to be moving forward. At this point, we would activate any enemies, and there are no enemies on the board. We've done a great job of taking care of them. So we're going to go ahead and move back to the start of the round where we're going to be able to draw up to three cards. I bet you thought I would have actually forgotten to do this. I'm going to go ahead and move this up before we go on. Our threaded cane can at this time choose to discard this if she wants to. She totally doesn't want to. That card's awesome. We're going to go ahead and draw two cards and see what we got. We got a swift card and we've also got a basic attack card. So we've got one card I think we're going to use to move and one to attack and one to dodge. It's going to be awesome. Wow, she is totally loaded. This is going to be an amazing turn for her. The wheel, of course, has used all three cards, so he's going to go ahead and grab three new ones and see what he has found. He's gotten the poised card. I can do one extra damage, and I cannot suffer stagger or stun. That's really good. Leaping, I can get plus one damage and may make a move action before using this card to attack, and then I get my basic attack. So he's got some fantastic attacking cards. That's awesome. Leaping, poised. Oh, so good. All right. 
I'm sure it's a huge shock that I'm going to go ahead and use my basic card to have the wheel perform his actions first. And we're going to go ahead and move one, two, back to the central lamp tile, bringing our, what is this, the survivor or... What is it? Yes, we're going to go ahead and bring them back. It says complete the mission when the token moves into the courtyard lamp space. I went ahead and got our survivor back here. So we're going to go ahead and reveal card 31. Oh, what a great way to start this off. All right, we're going to go ahead and take our 31 card and see what it says. It says guiding the survivors. Distribute one consumable and the Carol Rune Guidance Reward among the hunters. Old Yarnum has been devastated, and from what you've seen, only a handful of townsfolk will survive. This makes everyone that you save all that more important as this terrible sickness runs rampant. So we've gone ahead and completed this mission. Wow, that was awesome. All right, we got a mission completed. Now, I don't know if it's going to have us keep track of insight missions, but I'm going to go ahead and take a token and just place it down in our Hunter's Dream just in case it's keeping track for this mission. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these cards. I don't have to do that. Now, I do get a consumable off the top of the deck, and we're going to go ahead and see what we got. We've got a blood vial. Hunter's turn. I can heal too. That's going to be awesome. I'm going to go ahead and keep that. Now, of course, I have to go through here and find our Carol Rune of Guidance. So here is our Carol Rune of Guidance, and it says, Hunter's turn. Clear one slot. Move two. Discovered by the old hunter Ludwig. The rune emptied Ludwig of his fears, at least in the midst of a hunt. I think we're going to go ahead and give this to the Threaded Cane, because she's already got Ludwig's rifle. Why not, huh? So we're going to go ahead and do that. I was able to distribute one consumable and the Carol Rune of Guidance reward among hunters, so I can do that however I want. So we were able to save our survivor. That's awesome. Now it is still his turn. I'm going to go ahead and use another card. I'm going to go ahead and discard our Poised card. I cannot suffer Stagger or Stun, but I'm going to use it to move. I think we're going to move. Let's go this way. I'm going to move one, and then I'm going to use two to move over here. So let's go ahead and reveal our next tile. We have found we found a barred window. Let's see here. And it's, can oh, I can only go this way. So it's the only way I can go. I can only go that way. I can only walk in over here. Now I can put a consumable out here, and then I also have to put out another male beast patient. So we're going to go ahead and put that right here. And I think we have something for the barred window. It says here, and move on the barred window tile, reveal card 34. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to reveal card number 34 and see what it says. It says, another insight mission, powder keg ingenuity. From the streets, a hunter staggers into view. Reinforcements! About time you showed up! He slumps against a nearby wagon covered in tarps. Oh, Yarnum burns this night! All we can do now is aid the pyre. <laughs> For that, I need supplies, oil, wood, powder. As much as you can find, bring them to me. I'll handle the rest. So I have to place three, four insight tokens on this card. Hunters ending a move on the barred window space may discard any number of their held consumables. For each one discarded, remove one token from this card. Well, I already have three. Complete this mission when the card has no remaining tokens. I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. Now, of course, I still could walk down here and I'd have to move this card somewhere else. But that's pretty cool. I could go ahead and get, discard some of these consumables for that. Of course, the difference between this and what was written on here is this said that I had to end my move on the barred window tile. This actually says that I have to be on the barbed barred window space. Space. So I have to physically be on this space in order to be able to do what's on this card. So at this point, I can't actually help him out. Um, but this consumable sure could probably help him out, I bet. I could go ahead and interact with that. But <laughs> what about this guy? He's going to come and get me. I think we might try to take this guy out. Though I want to get him back here is what I want to do. Because if we can kill monsters on the central lamp tile, we can finish off our other insight mission, which is something we want to do. So I have one card left. I have my leaping. I can gain an extra damage and may make a move action before using this card to attack. Now, sadly, I could move one here. He would follow me and I could move back and attack him, but that doesn't help me. I'm actually just going to use it to move two. He is going to move one space 
towards me because I left his area. And I'm gonna go ahead and discard that card though, it's really good. But maybe I can get her to move over here, come back and attack him here and kill him. And that would be at least another character we have killed here. Let's go ahead and look at her cards. She's got, of course, counterattack, swift, and basic. So she's gonna go ahead and use her basic card to move two spaces. One, two to right here. At this point, she could use another card to move back again. But, and then he'll follow her, but I would only have one card left to try to take him out. Well, we're gonna do it. We're gonna see how this goes. I'm gonna go ahead and use my counter strike. I'm gonna discard that to move one space back. He's gonna follow me, and at this point now, I am gonna use my swift card, and I'm gonna play it right in my slash area here because that way I can go ahead and slash him at a three speed, which would be really fast. Compared to anything he's got on his card, he's only got twos, which is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and see what he's able to do to us. Enemy activation is a basic activation, which is kind of bad. I wish he would have got a special, because then I would have known all the rest of the cards are basic cards. But that's beyond the point. His basic attack is a two speed for two damage. And of course, ours is a three speed for three damage. He only has three health. We have taken out the male beast patient and is able to gain another blood echo, meaning our threaded cane is up to two. Also, on top of that, I get to remove yet another token from our insight mission. And that's going to be the end of the threaded cane's turn. Finishing our second turn, we're going to go ahead and move this up. Now, of course, when we get to here, we're going to be respawning all those enemies I've already taken care of. We're going to go ahead and draw up three cards. One, two, three. And so we have gotten, we've gotten a basic stagger, basic draw one, and a dash. Clear this slot. When used, move up to three spaces. Oh, that'll be really good. Maybe she can get another enemy into the light area and be able to take him out. Our wheel is going to go ahead and grab three cards. I don't know how many good ones these characters have left. We've gotten a basic attack, a basic stinger, oh, and a basic draw ones. we got basic, basic hand, basic, basic. Moving into our turn, I did forget to put down four insight tokens on the keg of ingenuity. So I have to go ahead and discard, is it four consumables? Yes, four consumables. Now he has three. I could use a card to move here, do an insight action to grab this one, and then move over here and complete our entire mission if I want to, because he's got three consumables that have been all four consumables. I don't think I have to do an insight action, do I? It just says, ending a move on the barred window space, I may discard any number of their held consumables. I think we might go ahead and do that. Since he's got just a hand of basic cards, I think it's not the end of the world. So we're just gonna discard all three of those to move to grab this consumable from this right here, Fire Paper, on attack gain plus one. Well, that's actually pretty good. These are all really good. And we're gonna go ahead then and move over here with our third card. And I'm gonna discard all four of my consumables into the discard pile. And we're gonna go ahead and complete this insight mission. I'm gonna go ahead and put this insight token though on our hunter's dream, because I don't know if I'm supposed to be keeping track of them. I haven't been told that, but just wanna make sure we do. So let's continue on here. It says, I, there's four on here. I may discard any number of held consumables for each one discarded, remove one token. So I discarded four. Complete this mission. When this card has no remaining tokens, reveal card 35. So let's go ahead and reveal card number 35 and see what it says. It is powder keg supplies. Distribute a call beyond reward and the cannon fire among hunters. We already have a cannon. I don't know if this is worth getting rid of four of those things. Thank you, my friend. I'll put these to good use. Trust me, you'll like my little project. As he moves, you see him gripping a deep wound at his side, going to show these beasts just what it means to fight a powder keg. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go ahead and grab the cannon, and we're also going to go ahead and grab a call beyond from our deck. So I was able to get a cannon. We've seen this before. Our uh, threaded cane actually has one. At this point, since I just received it, I could choose to switch this out with my Evelyn if I want to. I'm not going to, but I do have the choice of doing it between chapters. I can't do it be when I go to the Hunter's Dream. It's something you can't do. You can only switch weapons in between chapters or when you actually get it. Now we also get a Call Beyond. This thing better be worth four consumables because that cannon definitely wasn't. It says, a call beyond. Hunter's turn. Deal two damage to 
all enemies in your space. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is definitely worth four consumables. Create a small exploding star, a powerful part of the chorus arsenal. Oh, choir's arsenal. This is actually really good. I need to get a whole bunch of people in my square and blow them up. That's going to be awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side. Now, that's different from a ruin. It's not one of the ruins. Now, you can only have, I think it's two ruins and two hunter's tools at any time. So I've got a hunter's tool and a hunter's ruin. I'm going to go ahead and keep the hunter's ruin or the call beyond. I think I'm going to keep it with the threaded cane. I think he's going to be awesome with it. Though she actually moves farther. She can maybe gather up a whole bunch of people and kill them. For right now, that's what we're going to do. We're going to see how it works. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because we've completed that mission. His turn is over. He used all of his cards. We're going to move into the Threaded Cane. The Threaded Cane is first going to start by using Dash. I'm going to go ahead, when used to move, move three spaces. We're going to discard this to move one, two, three three onto this tile. Let's go ahead and grab our next tile and see what we have found. So far we've found three actual tiles. We haven't found any plain ones yet. We have found... No, <laughs> say that and we find one. I have found a plain one. I'm going to go ahead and put it this way so that we can spawn our female beast patient right there next to us. Here she is. I'm going to put her right there and she's going to move in here next to her with her big old giant cannon. At this point I'm going to go ahead and use my basic stagger card to move her back over here. I'm going to move one space and this character is going to follow us onto this tile. At this point then, we are going to attack her. I'm going to use my basic card. First, let's look at our female beast patient. Our female beast patient attacks super fast, so that's going to, it's all just going to be bad. And I'm going to go ahead and attack her. I need to do three damage. So I think we're just going to go ahead. I think we're going to have to take some damage this time. I'm going to go ahead and use this in our deadly thrust area. I'm going to go ahead and attach it to our deadly thrust, meaning the only spot we have left is our quick cut. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and draw a card because I have placed this down on my action area. Let's see what card we had. I'm hoping for a dodge. Oh no, we got bloodthirsty, which is Awesome, but just not awesome to have right now. <laughs> so we still have one more card, which is pretty cool. Now we're going to go ahead and see what our female beast patient does to our threaded cane. It attacks with a basic attack. It's just going to go ahead and attack for two. I know it says I'm just saying two, but it does actually attack us at a faster pace than I'm able to hit it. So in the way this would resolve is I would go ahead and take two damage, removing it from my board, leaving me with four damage left. Of course, we start with six, and we automatically heal when we move into our next chapter. So between chapter one and two, we fully healed. I then get to deal the three damage from my deadly thrust at a slower rate, but it's still going to be enough to destroy this female beast patient, giving myself another blood echo, which is now, now up to three blood echoes with hers, and that's the most you can have. So she might be going to the Hunter's Dream here pretty soon. But on top of that, we are going to be removing a token from our Insight mission, which means we have killed three enemies. One, two, three. This one I killed here. So we've killed the three enemies over here, so we have complete... Well, I don't know if we complete it, but we complete this mission when this card has no remaining tokens. Reveal card number 27. Does that mean it's complete? I don't know. We're about to find out. So we're going to grab card 27 from our stack of cards. Let's read what it says. Burnt reminders. Distribute one consumable and a hunter's torch reward among the hunters. The burning pyre roars into the night sky. Looking upon the bodies of the beast, the potential impact of this outbreak sinks into you. Should this be allowed to spread to the whole of Yarnum? There is no telling the havoc it could bring. Awesome. We were able to finish this. Let's go ahead and grab a consumable and see what we have found. We found <laughs> another paper fire. I'm going to go ahead and give this to the uh, threaded cane. I know the other guy doesn't have any, but he does so much damage that I don't think he's going to need this. Now we also get to go ahead, look through here for the Hunter's Torch. I don't really see how the Hunter's Torch can be that great, but let's find out. It says, when a non-boss enemy moves into your space, that enemy stops one space away and suffers one damage. That's going to be pretty good. Designed to incinerate beasts and victims touched by the Scourge. Now, of course, I'm going to have to use this and would have to exhaust it. I, it's not just going to be active all the time. But I think we're going to give this again to the Threaded Cane. That's just fine because, of course, I got the... I got a call beyond and the other one. I want him to come to my space. I want to blow them all up. 
that's the end of, no, she's got one more card because when we drew a card, I'm going to use this card to send myself to the hunter's dream. The threaded cane landing in the hunter's dream is going to first move this up one. Then we get to spend, or have to spend, I should say, our three blood echoes. So we have three. I'm going to go ahead and spend one to pick this up because this looks awesome. I get to heal two when I use this for not an attack, which is pretty good. Now I do have to replace that with something else. We're going to replace it with unyielding, stagger, and draw one card. Or I can get this one, draw two, and then discard a card. Block two, which might not be too bad. Or we could get Agile, Stagger, and it goes at a faster pace. So we could Stagger an enemy even at like a 4 speed. And yes, you can go above the 3 speed fastest attack by using one of these cards. I think we might grab that. Though this Stagger and draw one card looks pretty good too. Okay, we're going to grab the faster card. Because if I can Stagger with 2 damage and make it, or even with the 3, and have it go off, that'd be pretty good. We're going to grab that one. Then we're going to go ahead and draw our next card. Let's see what we have found. We have found tactical dodge, attack or dodge at plus one, then clear this slot. Oh, that's a really good card too. There's so many awesome, every time I draw a card, I think it's amazing. Oh no, which one do I get this time? I, I do like the fact that I'm gonna, that I can stagger and draw a card. We're gonna grab this one. Mainly because of course, one of her abilities is that she can stagger and affect an enemy attack of the same speed. So if I can get these attack to go at, if I can stagger at a two, doing three damage, this would kill this character before it would even be able to attack me because I could stagger it because I stagger at the same speed of them. So we're going to go ahead and draw our next one. And we have found another second wind. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Of course, we have our three insight tokens here. Those are the three missions we've already completed. Of course, this thing, mission, or this chapter hasn't told us to have any insight missions or tokens, but I'm still keeping track of them just in case. That's the end of the hunter's dream. I do get to reset my weapon. So this weapon is going to become available to me and I have healed myself all the way up to six. Now we get to choose which one of the sides of our card we want to use when we come back into the world. And at this point I now have to go through my entire deck here and find some cards to get rid of to replace with the new ones we just bought. I'm going to go ahead and remove two basic dodge cards and a basic extreme better attack. And I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle up our deck here to get it all set. Now there's not too many basic cards left. So this character's becoming pretty powerful. All the different cards in here are really cool attack cards and really cool dodge cards. So we're gonna go place this next to our character and when it's our turn to draw some cards, we'll be able to get three new ones. There is one more thing I could do. I'm gonna go ahead and discard this pungent blood cocktail to grab an antidote, which then I'm gonna to have to go ahead and shuffle the consumable deck up because I had to dig for it in the consumable deck. That is something I can do because of course of our antidote card down here. I can, when I go to the Hunter's Dream, I can discard a consumable, replace it with an antidote card. And I know a lot of these characters are gonna poison, so I think it's nice to have an antidote card on us at all times. That's gonna be the end of our turn, which means we're gonna move this up and we're gonna go ahead and activate all the different things that come with entering one of these red spaces. At this point, all boss enemies are removed from the map and there aren't any on here. We've done a really good job of keeping the map clear. We're then gonna replenish all the consumable places on the board and there's only two. One, I don't think I actually put one here. I think I forgot to put a consumable there. So we've got one here, we've got one here. We also still have one up there we haven't actually claimed. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna respawn all enemies related to missions. There aren't any, and no missions are active right now. We were able to complete all of our insert missions, so there aren't any, any active missions anyway. So that means I don't think we would be spawning any. I'm gonna remove this token unless I'm told otherwise. I don't think it's gonna matter that it's on the board anymore. We're gonna say it also disappeared, even though I guess I could keep it there, it wouldn't hurt at all either. We're then gonna go ahead and now uh, respawn these enemies starting with ones closest to hunters. That's only in case you would ever have to place more enemies out here than you have. You would always start at closest to the hunters and then move forward. Now the only hunter on the board is me. So that means we're gonna go ahead and put this character here. We're gonna put another one up here. We're gonna put one here and we're also gonna place one right here. That's the respawn of all of our enemies. Now sadly we are kind of surrounded. I didn't even realize that. We're gonna to have to try to find a way to kind of cut through all this and get to our next place. Now, of course, we've actually finished everything on this card. We have 
uh, gone ahead and ended the move on an alleyway tile and completed that mission. We've done the barred window mission, and we also started the hunt with card number 26 was the one about the burnt remainders. So we've already done that one as well. The only thing we haven't done yet is the hunt. we got to go on the hunt. So I have to end a move on the occupied house tile. So we have to find the occupied house tile. It be anywhere here. So I'm not even sure where to go. We're going to go ahead now, though, and get our characters ready. We're going to start with our Threaded Cane. The Threaded Cane is going to go ahead and draw three cards and see what she got. She got a basic attack, second wind, and a basic dodge. Wow, that wasn't really a very good hand. Now, I don't have to choose which side I'm using yet until we actually move into her actual turn. So actually knowing what these cards are does give us a chance to decide which one of these trick weapons we want to start with. The wheel only has three cards left, and as the board game Berserker says, he's wheelie, wheelie slow. <laughs> wheelie, get it, wheel. Okay, sorry, terrible joke. I thought that was awesome when you wrote it. All right, it says basic draw one card. I also have bloodthirsty. I can add plus one damage on a kill, draw a card and heal one, and I have a dodge card. All right, he might actually kill something and keep on moving and see what happens here. We're going to start with our wheelie solo wheel guy. We're going to go ahead and move first. The reason I'm going to start with him is if I can find another lamp tile, when the threaded cane comes in, she can come in on any un, uh, any lighted lamp. So if I can find another one, she doesn't have to start here. She could start potentially down here if there is one. Which is, that could be good? Oh, well, we'll see. We're going to move down here anyway. I'm going to go ahead and use my basic card here to go ahead and move two. I'm going to move one right here, and then I'm actually going to move into this tile. He's going to be coming with me, but that's okay. I kind of have a trick up my sleeve. We'll see if it works. I think it would be pretty awesome if it does. We're going to go ahead and take our tile and see what we have found. We have found... We have found the we found the occupied house. Oh, right. we have found the place we're looking for. This is awesome. And I get to place this any way I want, but no matter which way I place it, this character is going to be on the board. All right, which isn't bad because it's kind of part of my deal. We're going to go ahead and place it like this. I think that'll be kind of cool. Now, these two are not connected, meaning he can't come through here because it's blocked off. But I do move down here, spawning one of these female beast patience into the area here he will move in with me so now i have two enemies i have to try to take out which is going to be wheelie fun i'm going to keep using the wheel joke we're going to go ahead and use the call beyond hunter's turn i can deal two damage to all enemies in my space so i'm going to go ahead and exhaust this and deal two and, and uh, damage to both of these enemies. Now, sadly, that doesn't kill them both, but it makes them both really close to death. Now, I guess one of the only reasons I really did that is because it was cool to do. I can go ahead and pretty much kill anything with any attack I do here. I'm going to go ahead and use this first, Bloodthirsty. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think it's a good idea to use that card. I'm not going to use it. I lied. We're going to save it. I'm going to save it for a rainy day. We're not going to use it because this is going to be enough to actually just kill something. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my, hmm, where should I put this? I think I will put this in my empowered slam. We're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to be able to, but it's coming at a really slow rate. Huh, well that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put that right there. And that's going to be just fine because he is going to be the one attack. I'm going to go after this male beast patient first. That's going to be the person I go after first. We're going to see how we do. He's going to draw his card and see what he does. He's done a special attack. All right, so it says right here, poison. If this hunter is already poisoned, they suffer stun. And their attacks deal two less damage. Now, I've got a trick because I still have my basic dodge card. I'm going to go ahead and use that dodge in my empowered bash. So it's a two-speed dodge. I'm going to dodge that. And we're going to go ahead and not take any damage and not have this hit us for three. Not Oh, I think I still do get poisoned even if I do dodge. No, I don't get poisoned. It says if a hunter or enemies do not cancel or dodge an attack, they will suffer effects linked to the attack at the same time they suffer damage from it. So since I am able to dodge at two, I'm going to be dodging the Ashen Toxin meaning that I'm just going to go ahead and not take any damage. I'm going to do the four damage to this guy. I can heal one, but I don't have any to heal. 
I'm going to go ahead and gain a Blood Echo for killing him, bringing me up to two. But my Blood Thirsty card does allow me to heal one and draw one. Now, since we don't have any cards in our deck, I believe we're going to shuffle it up, and we're just going to go ahead and draw a card and see what we get. Hopefully, it's something really, really awesome. That'd be fantastic. Let's see what card we get. I hope it's a good one. We have found oh, a basic attack draw one. Hmm, that's no good. That's not going to kill this guy. I could still do it. I can still kill this guy. All right, we have one more card to attack with. So what we are going to do, I know this is kind of a waste, and I almost should have done it right away. Hunter, oh no, I've got a plan. Okay, better. <laughs> I've got a way better plan. Now, we know there's only one card left, and the card left is a basic attack. So I can go ahead and use my basic attack draw one, which is going to be in my empowered bash. So that means that has to, the only place I have left to put something. Of course, we dodged here, but the dodge clears the slot. So we're going to put this here, which means I'm able to draw a card. Now, I'm only able to do two damage to this enemy, but I am going to go ahead and use this. On attack, attack gains stagger and may stagger attacks of the same speed. So this thing only has a basic attack. Oh, I get to draw a card. Let's draw the card. I found a basic stagger. That's hilarious. We're going to go ahead. It's a basic attack. Totally fine because that basic attack is going to come in at a two speed, which is what I am attacking at. I'm attacking at a two speed and I'm using my stagger that staggers at the same speed. And stagger is a condition that's actually going to be super beneficial to us. It allows us to be able to attack without him being able to attack after us. Uh, it's going to completely prevent all effects and damage from the attack that's at a slower speed. But of course, this one allows me to do it at the same speed. We've done two damage, and, be, and he's got three, or she does, I mean. But check this out. On an attack, you may suffer up to two damage to deal that much in additional damage. So I'm going to go ahead and take one damage to deal three damage to this enemy, which will kill the enemy. And I will go ahead and grab my last token and just remove this one from the board. Now, of course, this could all be a mute point because I totally forgot about my card, the hunt mission. It says, end a move on the occupied house tile. I ended my move here, which means I'm going to have to reveal what's happened here, which means this entire combat could all be mute. Let's go ahead and grab card 19 and see what it says. I should have done that before I did any of the combat. It says here, hunt mission, the spreading plague. It says, entering the row, you see the sight of a hunter emerging from the houses. He stops upon seeing you, raising his stake driver defensively. You are no powder keg. Who are you? He cautiously approaches, keeping his distance as you answer. I see. So word has spread above. I am Durja. Unfortunately, I have not come upon any others. He looks back toward the doorway. I'll, I will finish here, but no threats remain. Check the rest of the hamlet. I will find you once I am finished. And a move on the graveyard tile after collecting at least one insight this chapter and reveal card 20. So lucky for us, that actually didn't affect anything that happened here. Otherwise, that would have been really, really bad. I'm going to go ahead and place this down on our hunt now, because this is our mission. We have to end a move on the graveyard tile after collecting at least one insight this chapter. We've already completed three. We've completed three insights, so we're good there. I'm going to go ahead and I have to flip this over because I, was, I used it. And that's really it. We've gone ahead and we're going to move this over to our new hunt mission. Oh, sorry. We've got this as our new hunt mission. We have to end in the graveyard. He's gotten three blood echoes. I still have a basic stagger card. I'm going to go ahead and use this stagger card to go to the hunter's dream. And as the wheel enters the hunter's dream with the threaded cane, hey, how's it going? Well, pretty good. I did some pretty good fighting. I got some guys, and look at this. We're going to the graveyard. Oh, that's fantastic, she says. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and spend our tokens, but of course, first I have to move this up one. I'm going to, oh man, there's so many good cards out here. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this tactical card. I think that's going to be pretty good. I can attack or dodge at plus one speed. That's going to be pretty good. We're going to see what our next card is. It is block two, defensive. Okay, that's fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and grab second wind as my second one. I think that one's going to be pretty good. Oh, this has a lot of poison, though. Maybe I should grab tireless. We'll see. We'll see what this card is. And if it's no good, we'll grab tireless. What's this? Counter strike. After dodging, I'm going to go ahead and grab tireless now. That'll be pretty good. Draw two, 
then discard one card and remove one of these tokens. I think getting rid of poison isn't a bad idea on this scenario. And we're going to go ahead and replace it with, what's this? Adaptive, dodge, stagger, clear this slot. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and put that right there. I'm going to go ahead, clear my hunt board. I'm going to go ahead and heal myself up to six. I would be able to refresh if I wanted to. I did refresh my ruins and my, well, I didn't use that, I guess. And I've gone ahead and gotten rid of a two basic attack cards and a stagger card in my deck. And I'm going to go ahead and shuffle this up. And so when we start our next turn, I'll be able to grab three brand new cards. And who knows, we might even see some of the ones we just picked up. That'd be pretty awesome. The threaded cane is going to come right down on the central lamp. And since she doesn't have any stagger cards, I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to the side that says, when you dodge, deal one damage to all enemies within one space. We're going to try that out for a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move. Because, of course, our thing is we have to... <laughs> We have to move onto the graveyard. So we're going to go over to the graveyard area where this monster is. And I think we're going to move over there with, I think we're going to use our second wind. I know it's kind of a waste, but I think that's the best plan. Oh, actually, you know what I might do? I might, nope, we're just going to go ahead and use a card. I really want to save this card though, but I want to save that card too, because I might have to do three damage, which would, I need that card to do. And I like to dodge because dodge is going to do an extra damage. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and use second wind. We're going to move with second wind up to here, one space. Now there is some monsters on adjacent tiles, but when we move, the enemies will only follow us when we exit a space or tile containing enemies. That way they'll pursue us. Since there aren't any enemies on this tile, they're not going to pursue us. Now, if I were to move off this tile like you saw before, he would pursue me. But moving off this tile, since this enemy is not on the tile, it's not going to pursue from what I understand. We have now moved on the graveyard. I'm actually going to end my turn there because I might have to take this guy down. But before I do, we are going to go ahead and read this and a move on the graveyard tile after collecting at least win insight this chapter. And we did that. So we're going to go ahead and check out card number 20. It says, the hunt mission, the spreading plague. You come upon a hunter standing over a pile of slain beasts. Saw cleaver wet with blood. He turns to you, but does it not seem aggressive? And just who are you? You explain your purpose. I see. Well, good, you're here. There are only a few of us powder kegs left. He shakes his head. Old Yarnavan is lost, and it is paramount we stop this outbreak, no matter the cost. Gather what you can, then find us at the center of the hamlet. Tonight, old Yarnam must burn. And they move on the central lamp tile after collecting at least two insight from this chapter. Wow, we're just on fire. Get it? Burn this place down and on fire. Oh my gosh, I'm on fire tonight. All right, we're going to go ahead now. And I think I'm actually going to use my second move to move back in here. Meaning he will come with me and that's just fine. We're going to go ahead and see what happens when you end a move on the central lamp tile after collecting at least two insight this chapter. I've already gotten two. So we're going to go to card number 21. This is amazing. It says, hunt mission, the spreading plague. Smoke and heat engulf the area as all around you. Building have begun to burn. Emerging into this plaza, you hear the sounds of combat. Rushing forth, you find Druja and the Saw Cleaver Hunter from before locked in battle. You're a fool, Dujra. This place must be plagued, purged. The Saw Cleaver Hunter shouts as he strikes. Dujra dodges and responds. You would slay those we protect? Can't you see what you're doing? These things you burnt, they're not beasts, they're people. The two move forward and clash once again. Choose one. Aid Durja, reveal card 22, or Aid the Saw Cleaver Hunter, reveal card 24. One's got a name and one's got a weapon. I think I might help the guy with the name. Not to mention, he's trying to save the people, and we've already saved a survivor down here, and that survivor didn't turn into some raging beast and want to attack me. So I think helping Durja is going to be the way to go, and I'm probably saying his name wrong, and I apologize. So we're going to go ahead and reveal card 22. 22 says, make sure, save dirt, yep, 22. Hunt mission, the spreading plague. 
The sock cleaver hunter lands a telling blow on Durja, sending him staggering to the ground. Seeing an opening, you move in to strike, landing a surprise blow on the sock cleaver hunter. What treachery is this? Have you succumbed to the madness as well? He shouts before moving to counterattack. Spawn Durja ally, represented by his token on the central lamp's space. He is not removed on a red space, but heals all damage. Complete the hunt by slaying Durja ally. Reveal card 23. Wait a minute. Really? I wanted to aid Durja. That's what I did, right? 22? I have to kill him? Spawn Durja's ally, represented by the, his token on the central lamp space. He is not removed on a red, but heals. Complete the hunt by slaying Durja's ally. Reveal card 23. Okay, that seems a little weird. Okay, I get it now. Durja's ally is the saw cleaver guy. Okay, so Durja would have been a different guy. Dejura, I'm, again, I apologize for saying it wrong. I'm going to call him Durja because I think that's awesome. And we're, he's got 10 health. I'm going to place him right here. I'm going to move this in case we need to. But if we ever go over here and gain this, awesome. But I don't think that's going to happen. We're going to spawn the ally in this space. So... I'm going to go ahead and put in the central lamp space. He's not removed on a red space, but will heal all damage. Now, I could use the ally token, but I don't really want to use the ally token. I like using miniatures. So I'm just going to say this is Durja's ally, even though it's not. This, I think, is Durja. <laughs> maybe it's not. Maybe it is his ally. But I think, no, it's not, because he'd have a saw cleaver. I'm going to put him down here. He's pretty cool looking. He's going to go right here with our beast patient. Now, of course, this it didn't tell me to put a fog gate up or anything, so this monster is still in here with me. I'm still going to have to deal with both of these somehow. Oh, wait a minute. Good news. I have this. Ludwig's rifle. When an enemy moves into your space, deal two damage to the enemy. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to deal two damage to this enemy patient because he moved into here with me. So I'm just going to do two damage to him. I'm going to place it right on top of him. I'm going to hopefully remember that it's there. Now that that's done, I've used one of my, attack, my actions to do that. This guy has 10 health, which is ridiculous, and he's going to attack me, but I'm not going to attack him right now. I'm actually going to go after this guy first. We're going to go ahead and see what we can do to him. I'm going to go ahead and just hit him with my plus one attack at my quick lash. We're going to go ahead and do quick lash on that. That's what we're going to do. We're going to, what do I want to do flay? I think we're going to do flay. I think that's my best bet. If I cover up my Quick Lash card with my basic attack, I won't be able to dodge at three. I'll only be able to dodge at twos. And I do have a dodge card. But if I attack him at three, or at two, I mean, I know that he's going to pull one of these cards that's going to be at a two speed. And if he pulls this one, that's going to be absolutely horrible. So I'm kind of st stuck here. Now, this guy only attacks at two. So let's just quick look at his card. Actually, it's not too bad. Um, well, unless he flips this. Look at this thing. Flip another enemy action. Durge's allies next attack gains plus one speed and stagger. Now, I do know I have the right card because it's the one two up here. So he is a one two. I'm going to go ahead and I think we are still going to attack him at two, which is going to do three damage, which means I didn't really need to use Ludwig's weapon, rifle. But huh, I wonder if I should not use it. I don't think we are. I think we're going to go ahead and keep it. Oh, what I should have done was use this. That's what I should have done. When you enter a space, the enemy stops one space away from you and suffers one damage. Oh, barf. I should have remembered that. That would have been really good. We're just going to go ahead and flay him. I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use Ludwig's rifle. We're going to save it. There might be a chance that I'm going to be able to move over here and have him follow me and just shoot him for two. That might be a better plan. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do about this guy. We're just going to go ahead and hit him at a three. Now, of course, we did go through our entire deck so we're going to go ahead and shuffle this up and then we're going to go ahead and see what this male beast patient does i hope he pulls the ability card no no i don't he doesn't don't he doesn't do that another male beast patient will spawn that'll be terrible too let's see what happens he has gone and done a basic attack so his basic attack is just going to do two i'm going to do three there's not much i can do about it i could dodge it if i want to but i think i want to dodge the attack that's about to come from him so i'm going to save my dodge card I'm going to take two damage from the beast patient, which is fine. I'm down to four. I'm going to do three damage back, killing the beast patient. And I'm going to go ahead and gain a blood echo token for that, which is just fine. That's the end of her turn. That's the end of both of our turns. Um, good news, the wheel's coming right down here to help attack this guy with her, which would be awesome. 
And that's going to be it. We're going to go ahead and advance our meter and gain our cards. Oh, no, I forgot. This guy has to attack me. Oh, my gosh. The enemy activates. I forgot about that. Let's see what he does. He's going to go ahead and do a basic attack as well. So he's going to attack me for two damage with three damage. And it's going to deal one damage to all hunters in this space unless they dodge two. Well, I'm going to dodge three is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and use my dodge card right here on my quick lash, which says when you dodge, deal one damage to all enemies within one space. So again, maybe it would have been good to use the... It's so funny how I don't get to get things right. Should have used Ludwig's rifle. Should have shot this guy for two. Should have not attacked. Should have maybe attacked this guy. Dodged the attack. I would have done the three damage to him because I would have done one damage to all enemies in my space and the extra damage to him. But instead, I failed miserably. And I did at least one damage to this guy. So I'll put that on his card. And I've dodged, and I'm going to go ahead and, of course, clear that slot. So I do still have two open slots for my threaded cane. I have the flay and the quick lash. That's Now that's the end. He's activated. I did a poor combat round. hope you're probably all laughing at me. And we're going to go ahead and move into the end. We're going to start by moving this up one. The threaded cane will go ahead and draw three cards. Let's see what she got. She got a basic stagger. Oh, here's the on kill draw one and heal one. That's not going to help us too much, but swift. Oh, that's going to be so good. All right, so we've got some cards there I'm pretty excited about. The wheel is going to go ahead and gain three cards. Let's see what he got. He's got the second wind card, a basic dodge, and a, oh my gosh, those were not good cards to get. He got terrible cards. Oh, no. And there's we've already used two of our basic attacks, so I'm not going to be able to stagger. There's a very slim chance I'm going to be staggering this guy at all. I'm just going to have to power into him and see what I can do. I might die, but hopefully that'll give enough damage into this Dirge's ally to help with the Threaded Cane, hopefully we'll take him down. Here comes the fight of our life. The wheel comes back from the Hunter's Dream right into the central lamp. And he's going to go ahead and do his activations first. The first thing I'm going to do is going to go ahead and use my Empowered Slam. I'm going to put my basic card there and draw a card and see what I get. We've got a poised plus one and cannot suffer stagger or stun. I don't think this guy, oh, he does do some staggering. All right, well, good news. He hopefully isn't going to stagger me. We're going to see how this goes. I'm going to go ahead and flip his enemy action card and see how this goes. He has gotten his special. So let's go ahead and read it. I'm sure it's terrible. It says, I attack at two. After attack, if this attack dealt any damage, Dirge's ally heals two. Oh, oh, barf, he's going to heal two. All right, he's going to go ahead and attack me at a two speed. I'm attacking at a one speed. So I'm actually going to go ahead and dodge at a two speed with my empowered bash. I'm going to go ahead and cover that empowered bash up at a two speed, and I get to clear the slot, which means I don't actually take any damage, which means he's not going to heal two. I'm then going to go ahead and attack him for three. So I've done three. He's down to four damage already. I get to go ahead and do it. Another attack if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and use my poised card. Oh, wait. I know what I'm going to do. Oh, or do I wait? I think I wait. I'm going to go ahead and use my poised card. I'm going to grab one extra damage doing four damage. He's going to hit me for three. Three. And stagger. Oh, yuck. All right. Maybe I should attack for two plus one is three and stagger him. There is a chance it might work. Oh, there's so many things I can do. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. Hunter's turn. Deal two damage to all enemies in your space. Done. Done deal two damage. Boom. You're going to take two damage. Three, four, five, six. He's taken six. Three, four, five, six. There. Now I think we're going to use poise. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, here's the deal. We're going to go ahead and use poised right here. On my second card here. So I can't suffer. I cannot suffer stagger or stun. Oh, maybe I should use it here. On my Empowered Slam. I think we're just going to do it. Yep, we're just going to go for marbles here. All the marbles right here. We're going to use it in the Powered Slam. So I'm going to do four damage to this guy. And I cannot suffer Stagger or Stun. Let's see what he does. He does his ability, which is going to be... Oh, this is the terrible one. It says, flip another enemy action. Dirges and next allies next attack gains plus one speed and Stagger. I can't be Staggered, which is awesome. He's going to do his special, which means he's going to heal. He's going to do his three damage to me before I can do anything else. I don't have any dodges I can do. So I'm going to take three damage. I'm down to three with this guy. 
we're going to go ahead then and he's going to heal two. So he's going to heal back two, meaning he's only taken four damage. I'm now going to attack with my poise card. I cannot be staggered, even though this does stagger me. And I'm going to do four damage. So we're at six, three, six, seven, eight. Then we're going to take him down. I'm going to go ahead and on attack may suffer two damage to deal that much an additional damage. So this, since it's on the attack, I'm going to go ahead and discard two health from me, leaving me at one, but doing two to him, meaning I've done three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I took out Dirge's ally with the wheel all alone. Oh, he totally made up for everything he did. So he's going to go ahead and get off the board. So I've gone ahead, taken out Dirge's ally here. He's pretty awesome. I love that axe that he's got. Even though I know this isn't the guy, I think that's a pretty cool miniature. We're going to go ahead and Pull these off here, get rid of Dirge's ally. Oh, that was nuts. And we're going to go ahead and read our hunt mission card here. It says, uh, end move on the central. Oh, wait, I've already done that one. We're going to go ahead and, sorry, it's right here. Here it is. <laughs> I don't even know where my cards are. It says, complete the hunt by slaying Dirge's ally. Oh, the reveal card 23. So I completed the hunt. That's awesome. Let's see what it says here. Prey slaughtered Dirge's ally. Distribute Carol Ruin Hunter reward, and the repeating pistol firearm amongst the hunters. Your blows land true and strike the hunter down. Dirges slowly moves to his feet and staggers toward you. Good to see some remaining untouched by bloodlust. He looks upon the fire surrounding you. But no time for chatter. We must move quickly. And that completes the hunt. Let's go ahead and grab the ruin and the repeating firearm pistol. Here is our repeating pistol. It says, when an enemy makes a basic attack, automatically stagger that enemy. So it's the same as the other two that I've had, Evelyn and my other gun. And let's see, on the back though, it says, the hunter's turn, discard one card to refresh, which is the same as her, discard one, or sorry, Evelyn, discard one card or blood echo, or for free when you transform your weapon. Oh, this one's way better. All right, we're gonna give that to our wheel. That's gonna be awesome. Now check this out. We've also found the Carol Hun Ruin Hunter. Carol Rune Hunter, on attack, gain your attack gains plus one speed, so I could be attacking at one or three speed with one of my attacks. After attack, you may transform your weapon for free, which will also redo, get my repeating pistol back. Oh, wow, they put those together for a reason. This red smudged rune means hunter. And who has been adopted by those who have taken the hunter of hunter's oath? which is going to be the wheel. That's going to be awesome. He's going to take that. Now, he has his second ruin. He can only have two. He's got two ruins, so he can't gain any more ruins. So if we do get any more, we have to give it to the other character. We have completed our second mission, or second chapter. We're going to be moving into chapter three pretty soon. That was pretty awesome. Before moving to the next chapter, we do get to spend our blood echoes. Our threaded cane has one, and our wheel actually killed that guy, so I believe he's going to get a blood token as well, or sorry, a blood echo. We're going to go ahead and spend these. I think we're going to go ahead and spend the th wheels first. He's going to grab a defensive card. He's going to grab a block two, and we're going to replace it with a blood thirsty. And I think she is going to go ahead and grab this stagger. It's also a dodge. I can either use it as a dodge or a stagger and I can clear this slot. Not a bad thing. I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Though I do like this one too. And now I'm going to put this down here, which is a poise card, but it doesn't matter. I believe we clear these when we move to the next mission. And if we don't, I'm going to do it anyway because it's cool to see some neat new cards out here. That's going to be the end of our chapter here. Let's go ahead and finish. But before we do, I do have to mention that, of course, we are going to be discarding these two from our respective decks in order to place those cards into here and change it. I believe this one, I think this one was from the from the wheel. And yes, this one was from the wheel and this one was from the threaded cane. I've discarded both of those and we've replaced them with that adaptive and also defensive. There we go. So that's it. We were able to complete chapter two. What an amazing game. This is so much fun. I haven't had this much fun in Dungeon Crawler in a while, especially the way the mechanics work. It's all cards. There's no dice, which uh, don't get me wrong, love dice, but it's really fun to have a totally new grasp of things. I like the way that the monsters respawn. I like all the way this game works. It's so much fun. There's a lot of thought into what you have to do in order to try to take down a monster. And of course, my <laughs> move up here with her wasn't the greatest, but I think I did really good at the end with him. Hopefully we didn't make any mistakes. And if I did, of course, please 
please leave some of those in the comments below. I would love to make everybody be able to learn as much as they can from this game. There's a lot going on. And there's a lot of things happening that you have to kind of keep track of. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough of Bloodborne, the board game. I do wish Colin was with me, but hopefully he'll come back again. Sadly, I don't think it'll be for Bloodborne, but I'm having such a blast. It's so much fun. I have to get him back in one of these games eventually soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you can see the third chapter for Bloodborne and we can complete the campaign together. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. I hope you're excited to move into mission through chapter three. I am excited too. We took down a guy with a giant saw blade. Oh, and the wheel did it all alone. Check this guy out. Oh, this guy's so cool looking. It was my favorite character that I saw in the game. All right, that's it. Thank you again so much for watching. If you're excited to see what happens in chapter three, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.